Reverend clergy, sisters, ladies and gentlemen, I preface my talk to you with this statement. While I am a Catholic priest, I speak to you on this occasion as an American citizen and in no manner as a representative of the Catholic Church. It is a basic tenet of traditional Catholic doctrine that God, the Supreme Being, is the one ultimate source of all truth, and that in the final analysis, all truth is such because it corresponds to and is in harmony with the mind of him who is its divine author, Almighty God. By the same token, falsehood in whatever form, lies, distortions, misrepresentations, dishonesty, hypocrisy, falsehood in any form is morally wrong. It is immoral because it is in opposition to the mind of God, because it is contrary to divine truth. Truth, then, is not determined by majority opinion nor by a Gallup poll. It is God-made, God-given. If something is true, it's true if nobody believes it. If something is false, it's false even though everybody believes it. Truth is not subjective in the sense that the individual determines for himself what constitutes truth. It is objective. It is something that we must search out and discover and learn. It is not a relative thing that is changeable and fluctuating. Truth is absolute, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And in all truth, we can say, God is truth. While the ever-intensifying life and death struggle of our day against the communist conspiracy and its allies is being waged on many fronts and on many issues, yet it must be emphasized time and again that the real war being waged today is not basically America against Soviet Russia, nor the free world against communism, but rather the real war being waged today is fundamentally God against militant atheism. The forces of goodness and morality and truth and justice against the powers of materialism and the secularism and immorality and godlessness, concentrated, to be sure, in the satanic scourge of the criminal communist conspiracy. In other words, as General Douglas MacArthur quite concisely put it, the problem is basically theological. The issue is atheism, the ultimate enemy is godlessness, a godlessness which is of the very essence of communism. We hear and we read today about Christian communism and Catholic communists. In the all but universally understood meaning of these terms, there is no such thing. And to talk and to write about religious communism is to talk and to write contradictions. Contradictions which simply further be cloud the thinking and add to the confusion of the uninformed and the naive. Communism is militantly atheistic. That is to say, it not only denies God, but it is totally dedicated to the elimination of all belief in God and of all religion and religious institutions from the face of the earth. This has been stated many times.
by communist leaders and communist spokesmen in their published documents and in their public declarations. For example, we must combat religion. This is the ABC of all materialism and consequently of Marxism. Down with religion, long live atheism. So spoke Lenin. Again, it is no use hoping for a communist victory unless we destroy Christianity. So declared a communist leader in Mexico. Or again, communism abolishes eternal truths. It abolishes all religion and all morality. So reads the communist manifesto. And what the communists have openly declared over the years to be their aim and their policy, they have ruthlessly and systematically put into practice a fact to which the communist enslaved peoples of the world would readily testify were they free to do so. Oh yes, we do hear and we read of an open church now and again and of the apparent religious freedom allowed in one or another of the communist nations, but this, as all here present well realize, this is but window dressing, a facade to deceive and to mislead the gullible in non-communist lands. One more propaganda piece to be fed to the American public by one of the best allies the communists have ever had or could possibly have, namely most of the mass communications media of the United States. There is no more real freedom of religion in any communist country today than there is freedom to beat the heat in you know where. Of course, the communists have long since learned that an aggressive frontal attack upon religion would get them nowhere. Rather, would it expose their hand and substantially set back, if not entirely negate, the realization of their ultimate aim. And so the strategy became one of propaganda infiltration, indoctrination, boring from within, with results that are becoming more and more apparent and alarming with each passing day. Keeping in mind now that much of the best work done for the cause of atheistic communism is done, whether knowingly or not, by non-communist hands, Keeping this in mind, here on the American scene, over the last several years, that cause of atheistic communism has made truly remarkable progress. Not by known communists actively opposing religion and killing and maiming and terrorizing its practitioners, but through patient gradualism and diabolical cunning and flagrant hypocrisy by communism's agents and dupes and sympathizers laying the groundwork and creating the climate and softening up the American people more and more for the eventual communist kill. While a recent poll conducted by a national Catholic magazine tells us that there are now some four million atheists in America, the fact remains that the overwhelming majority of Americans believe in God, yes. But just what practical meaning does that belief in God have for so many of them? Not much. Judging by the soaring crime rate, the widespread violation of law and disrespect for authority, 
the rampant immorality in all forms, currently contaminating the American scene, and so on. Now, theoretically, God is not denied here in America today, but he surely seems to be in practice insofar as any recognition of him and his eternal truth and his moral law is observable in the lives and actions of so many, many Americans. And is not this condition made to order for the communists as one most beneficial, if not necessary, factor on their side toward the attainment of their ultimate objective of the conquest of America from within. The denial of God in theory by millions and in practice by millions more, the rejection of authority, the breakdown in law and order and moral standards, responsible leaders discredited, effective law enforcement imperiled, and so on, and so, while the structure of our American Republic is still substantially sound, yet conditions continue to become more and more precarious in our land. And mature, law-abiding, God-serving, informed Americans become more and more concerned. Americans, that is, who know the truth about communism and the alarming inroads it has made to date upon the American scene. And at the root of all this, I submit, is the denial of God, atheism. In the words of the Catholic bishops of America, in one of their annual statements some years ago, quote, God is an inescapable fact, and one cannot make a safe plan of life in disregard of inescapable facts, unquote. And again, quotation, this is God's world, and if we are to play a man's part in it, we must first get down on our knees and acknowledge God's place in his world, end of quotation. To my mind, there is no question but that the pathetic plight of the world and of our nation at the present time is due to the fact of man's abandonment of God, man's attempted dethronement of God, man's arrogant defiance of the Almighty and defilement of his moral law. And in vain do we seek for peace and freedom and justice and brotherly love unless God be restored to his rightful place in the lives and hearts and souls of men and in the deliberations and councils of governments and nations. The warning of William Penn, those people who are not governed by God will be ruled by tyrants. That warning is no less applicable to our day as it was when William Penn uttered that warning so long ago. And in the words of sacred scripture, unless the Lord build the house, they labor in vain who build it. And with the denial of God, comes the denial of objective truth. For without him, there is no ultimate basis for truth nor moral sanction for its violation. And yet, the mere suggestion that there is any such thing as objective truth with God as its ultimate author and source, the mere suggestion of this would be laughed out of many a college classroom in America today. Truth is relative. Truth is subjective, we are told. We must hear all sides, they say, 
And so, for example, the communist spokesmen who are dedicated to our enslavement or burial and who have never told the truth in their communist lives except when it served their purpose to do so, communist spokesmen have been allowed to give out with their lying and poisonous propaganda to tens of thousands of students in American colleges and universities over the last several years. We must hear all sides indeed. I, for one, have no desire to hear all sides. I want to hear just one side, the truth. Our American Republic is today in such dire straits and beset by so many evils for various reasons, yes. But one of the most basic reasons surely is this. The denial or suppression of the truth by those in possession of it or their refusal honestly and realistically and courageously to face up to that truth. There is no questioning the fact that the atheistic communist conspiracy would not now pose the dire threat it does to America and to what's left of the free world were the truth about it widely enough disseminated by our alleged leaders and through the communications media over the past 20 or 30 years. It has become the danger it is because the truth about it was denied, suppressed, distorted by government officials, by the communications media, by textbook writers, while those few who did attempt to tell that truth were invariably ridiculed, maligned, silenced, destroyed, their speeches and writings ignored or derided by hypocritical or cowardly or pro-communist opinion molders and image makers and thus relegated to obscurity. And so there has taken place over the last several decades, the nearly incredible phenomenon of the overwhelming majority of the American people being so incessantly and insidiously and successfully propagandized and conditioned and brainwashed with all sorts and combinations of lies and misrepresentations and half-truths that it became ever more and more difficult for them even to recognize the truth concerning the communist conspiracy, much less to have the conviction and the courage to act upon it. It becomes then a matter of ever increasing urgency that those of us who know the truth about communism and its allies, avail ourselves of every opportunity and spare no effort to disseminate that truth as far and as wide as possible with unwavering confidence that God willing, when enough Americans know enough of the awful truth, when enough Americans become sufficiently convinced, they will having the requisite courage to do so, they will act accordingly. It was George Washington who said, truth will ultimately prevail if enough pains are taken to bring it to light. It is absolutely imperative that those pains be taken if our American Republic is to survive as a free and a sovereign nation and freedom restored to our enslaved fellow men throughout the world. Again, in the words of Holy Scripture, you shall know the truth, and the truth 
shall make you free. And what are those truths which, if America is to be saved and our enslaved fellow men liberated and the communist conspiracy destroyed, what are those truths which each and every genuine anti-communist American must know and must do all within his power to bring to his fellow Americans? Well, the primary and most fundamental of those truths, of course, is the truth about communism itself, its nature, strategy, tactics, and objectives. The truth that it is an international, criminal, militant, atheistic conspiracy, that it is the most horrendous and despicable and ruthless enemy of free men in all history, that it aims to conquer the world, that it will use any and every conceivable means to realize that aim, and that its prime objective is the conquest of our American Republic and the establishment of a Soviet dictatorship here on American soil. That the communist conspiracy now has more than one billion people, two-fifths of the human race, in varying degrees of slavery and occupies some 16 million square miles of the Earth's land surface. The truth that some 25 countries of the world are here and now completely under its domination and that every other country on earth is under its influence, many of them to a very high degree, and that most definitely includes the United States of America. With the understanding then that this is the principal and most basic truth about which any well-informed anti-communist must have an adequate comprehension. There are any number of other truths, the knowledge of which is necessary for most effective anti-communism. Some of the more important of these would include the truth about that godless monstrosity in New York called the United Nations. Perhaps, or should we say unquestionably, the principal instrumentality of the Soviet apparatus for world domination. The truth about the Supreme Court, the danger which in its present composition, it constitutes to our American Republic and the extensive damage it has already inflicted in its pro-communist, pro-criminal, pro-pornography, anti-prayer, and anti-law enforcement decisions. The truth about the so-called civil rights movement and the mammoth fraud being perpetrated by it upon the American people, both Negro and white, the extent to which the communists and their collaborators are involved in this movement, and the truth about some of its alleged leaders, Reverend Martin Luther King, for example. The truth about the phony war in Vietnam in which the most powerful nation in history has now been engaged for several years against pipsqueak North Vietnam, an area the size of the state of Missouri, a dot on the map of the world a war in which some 6,000 Americans have already been killed and many, many thousands more wounded, 
many of them maimed for life, a war which our American fighting men are not being allowed by the American government to fight to win. The truth about the multi-billion dollar swindle called foreign aid through which the American government supports with the money of the American people the sworn enemies of the American people and supports as well some of our so-called allies who in turn are supplying the communists in North Vietnam who are killing Americans. The truth about the trade being carried on by the American government with an enemy dedicated to our enslavement or burial and those cultural exchanges in which we send them culture and they send us spies. The cunningly contrived propaganda currently being disseminated that the Moscow brand of communists are the good guys and the Red China brand the bad guys. All communists are bad guys. <laughs> the widespread and increasing effort to discredit and to demoralize the police in the performance of their vital duties such as by the almost invariably false charges of police brutality. What about civilian brutality against the police? Last year, 54 policemen were murdered, 7,700 policemen were injured, and a total of some 18,000 policemen were assaulted by civilians in this country in 1965. What about civilian brutality against the police? The truth about the ready availability to the youth of our nation at thousands of newsstands and drugstores and snack bars across the country of every imaginable kind of salacious and pornographic printed and pictorial filth and the contribution this makes to the lowering of moral standards and the weakening of the will to resist and to the internal decay of our land, making it more and more of a vulnerable target for communist subversion. The truth about the ever-growing power of and the centralization of power in the federal government and the evils consequent upon this growth and concentration. The truth about Cuba and the more and more threatening communist bastion well entrenched there 90 miles south of the Florida coast and the stark, undeniable fact that the government of the United States has yet to do anything about removing that communist bastion from our very doorsteps, while that American government supposedly fights communism several thousand miles away in Southeast Asia. The truth of the statement of Mr. Robert Welsh, a statement to which I thoroughly subscribe. The most powerful single force promoting the worldwide advance of the communist conspiracy is the government of the United States. And last, but far from least, in this partial list of vital truths and disturbing realities 
of which enough of the American people must come to an adequate comprehension soon enough, if we are to be victorious in this life and death struggle with atheistic communism, a struggle in which so many of us are now so very deeply involved. Last but not least of those truths is that of the inaction to date of that one force above all others, which to my mind ought to be in the forefront of the fight against militant godlessness, namely the churches, organized religion. In this crucial, unprecedented struggle, it is my very firm conviction that organized religion in general has been a mammoth and inexcusable failure to date. While the overwhelming majority of the active anti-communists in America are God-believing and God-serving men and women, and while the anti-communist efforts of individual clergymen are deserving of high praise, yet the churches as such, the various religious bodies in America have been, I submit, with rare exceptions, abject failures up to this point in the fight against communism. In view of the nature and power and aims and accomplishments over the years of atheistic communism, I once took for granted that the churches in America would long since have been imparting to their members in their publications and schools and meetings and pulpits the truth about communism and giving their members information on the ways found most effective in combating it and encouraging them to join and to be active in sound anti-communist movements and organizations. But nothing like this ever materialized. Almost incredible, though this appears to me and to so many other informed religious patriotic Americans. Indeed, in many cases, quite the contrary has materialized. Apart from those few clergymen who have thus far been identified as communists, and apart from the sizable number of others who have managed to accumulate a significant number of communist front affiliations, apart from this, we have witnessed upon the American scene over the last several years numerous examples of the clergy and other religious aiding and abetting the enemy not to mention those church publications whose anti-communism, if it showed at all, was far overshadowed by their anti-anti-communism and with special mention being made of those clergymen and religious of many denominations, some of them in high places, who have seen fit to aid and to support that most notorious of leaders in the civil rights movement, Reverend Martin Luther King, whose record ill qualifies him for such aid and support. Well, since a very depressing book could be written on this subject of the failure to date of America's churches to do the part they are so singularly equipped to perform in the struggle against the militant atheism, which is communism. Since a book could be written on this subject, suffice it to say here that this failure has been a source of tremendous disappointment to me and to countless members of those churches from coast to coast. And it is most fondly to be hoped that this 
utterly pathetic failure will soon be rectified and that a realistic position and program with regard to atheistic communism will soon be forthcoming from what is potentially the most powerful single anti-communist force in America, the churches. For the last several decades, as a result in large part of the conspiracy of silence, to use the words of Pope Pius XI, and as a result of the lies and misrepresentations and distortions and half-truths of most of the controlled mass communications media of America concerning communism and concerning genuine anti-communist organizations and activities and leaders. As a result of this, there was widespread ignorance and confusion and indifference and complacency on the part of the vast majority of the American people and only in most recent years has it been possible to get even a portion of that truth to any significant segment of them. However, the active anti-communist forces upon the American scene have now arrived at the point where it is very possible indeed for the generality of Americans to learn that truth because it is readily available from many sources. For example, in innumerable books and magazines and newsletters and papers, in several hundred American opinion and similar libraries from coast to coast, on various conservative radio and television programs, from conservative public speakers, who are lecturing more and more frequently throughout the country, and from the many records and tapes and film strips that are quite readily procurable for listening and for viewing on a large variety of Americanist and anti-communist topics. All of these giving segments of the total picture and so contributing to an ever better comprehension of that total picture by ever increasing numbers of our fellow citizens. And yet, while a most commendable job has already been done, a mammoth job remains, that of getting as much of the whole truth as possible, as soon as possible, to our fellow Americans who do not know it or who are but more or less vaguely aware of it. There is no substitute for this. If the communist conspiracy is to be destroyed, if our enslaved fellow men are to regain their freedom, and if we are to remain free, the truth about communism and about those organizations and individuals who are doing its work, this truth must be known by enough of the American people, and it will not be known by them unless they are taught, unless they are told where to get that truth. Now there are, it should be noted, some sincere and well-informed among us who feel that it is no longer the ignorance of communism on the part of the American people, which is the major problem here, so much as it is fear and cowardice on the part of those who already know. Personally, with all due respect, for those who are of this mind, and while granting that there is a significant number of informed Americans who are not doing their part because of fear or cowardice or other such reason, yet 
I firmly believe that the courage and the fortitude and the patriotism of those American heroes of yesteryear who contributed so mightily to make our nation the greatest on earth and the envy of the world. I firmly believe that these virtues are still in the hearts and souls of enough Americans of our day to keep it that way. Once those Americans are brought to an adequate knowledge of the truth about communism and to a sufficient awareness of the increasingly grave threat it poses to our American Republic and to what remains of the free world. To be the heralds of that truth, to proclaim it far and wide, to labor with all of the energy and dedication and resourcefulness at our command toward the speedy increase of our ranks with the caliber of men and women we seek who have come to share our ideals and convictions and to act always with undaunted courage in accordance with the truth we possess. Such is both the task and the challenge of each and every God-serving, informed, patriotic American in this our day. And under God, I do not hesitate to say the best way of going about all this and so the most effective way of opposing atheistic communism. I have long since been very firmly convinced is by doing so in and by and through the John Birch Society. The task, then, is a gigantic one. The challenge we face can hardly be exaggerated. The stakes are nothing less than freedom or slavery for all mankind. But we have this one tremendous advantage. Truth is on our side. And so, with a firm reliance on divine providence and with ever greater determination, let us pursue and proclaim that truth relentlessly and without compromise, having full confidence that it will ultimately prevail in God's own good time. And it will prevail because all truth has its ultimate source in divine truth, and that is none other than Almighty God. Thank you.